Alright everybody, hail and welcome back to another episode of Midgard Musings. Thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Jesse and I'm the host here on this channel. And if this is your first time tuning in to the show, I invite you to subscribe down below if Norse heathenry, Germanic paganism, you know, assault true, also true, whatever you want to call it nowadays, is your thing. Um, and don't forget to turn bell notifications on, that way you are notified every time that I do upload new content. Alright, so today's video, everybody, is one that I've been meaning to do for quite some time. Actually, it was meant to sort of ride off of the coattails of a small mini-series that I ran here um, about a month or two ago, uh, talking about the various parts of self. Uh, because this subject, what I'm going to be talking about today, kind of ties into our um, soul complex, I think, and, and how we, as, as heathens at least, uh, tend to have a, a view of what makes us who we are and what makes us us. Uh, so I wanted to talk today about um, a concept um, uh, or, or a word or, or something that we uh, read about um, and, and come to know about as um, this word is called other. Uh, you're going to see that word pop up here on the screen and uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the uh, like etymology of the word, some what knowledge we have of its um, linguistic roots. Um, and also, you know, offer my own uh, thoughts and, and, and ideas of this as it applies to uh, and for us as heathens in modern times, right? Um, because as I've said many times on this channel, I am um, not a hardcore reconstructionist heathen, nothing against those types of, of heathens. I'm not a historical heathen per se, although I lean heavily um, on the research and on pulling from historical facts to build towards um, a heathen future and, and, and developing traditions and practices now in modern times that uh, our descendants can look back on and, and be inspired by. Uh, so having said that, um, it's talking about you know being an inspiration and, and, and being inspired, uh, this word other uh, that I'm talking about right here, um, and I'm going to be looking down at some notes so as I look down and up you understand why, it's um, a word that is um, there's really nothing that has a, uh, this, this word in Old Norse has no real direct equivalent uh, in modern English. Um, it has uh, concepts that, uh, as it refers to, is, is not understood today as it was uh, in the pre-Christian times or, or you know, Germanic, uh, ancient Germanic societies, uh, but it's generally translated nowadays as uh, something along the lines of divine inspiration, okay, um, or inspired mental activity, some sort of thing that takes a hold of us that inspires us beyond what we can tangibly uh, put our hands or, or put our finger on, right? Um, there are some other Germanic words that um, have origination or origins <laughs> in this word. Uh, we're going to talk about some of those real quick. Um, an old English word that is woth, um, that is to mean a sound or song or, or, or voice, you know, poetry. Um, um which is poet, an orator, or prophet. Um, an old Saxon, Wodian, uh, which is to rage or be raving mad or crazy. You're gonna, you're, I think if, you're, if you are a heathen of any length of time, you're hearing sounds and words that are very similar and, and are very close to somebody very important in our, in our, in our faith and in our path, right? Um, and then finally, we have an old Norse word called Ursa. I may be mispronouncing that, but as I understand, Ursa is to make um, raving mad or crazy. Um, and I'm talking about these words, and as I'm saying these words, you know, Woldeon, Woth, Oder. Um, these are these are words that, as we say them, have a very close connection to Odin or Odin or whatever, you know, Wolton, Woden. Uh, these old Germanic names for the Allfather, and uh, he, uh, you know, the name of Odin himself is derived from this old Norse word because Odin is uh, the master of Wolder or the, the mad one, and uh, we're going to get into the connections of that, that word madness, that word raging, that word raving, and we're going to be talking about a little bit uh, more of that as we go on throughout this video, but there it gives, there, there is some of the background of the, of the linguistic history behind this word older. Now we're going to get into talking about kind of what it means 
Um, and then my interpretation or my understanding of, of how we can apply this into our modern day heathen practices. Okay, so Other is a, uh, understood as a force that is um, something that causes people to create, perform, um, any sort of, you know, any, 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 any of the arts, you know what I mean? Whether it be um, any sort of crafting uh, sort of thing. You could be a wood burner, wood carver, uh, painter, leather worker, um, blacksmith, mead maker, um, brewer, anything that is, you know, music, for instance, just anything of the arts, anything that, that is considered a craft. Uh, Other is, is that force that causes you to be inspired uh, beyond what is um, tangible to you. Um, these sort of things that, that cause someone to be able to speak uh, out of out of sorts that, you know, like prophecy, for instance, things that you can't say, like, well, he's pulling or she's pulling that from, you know, something tangible, a source of whatever. It's It, it goes beyond that. It, it goes into the realm of the sacred. Um, and quite often, um, to have other and, and to, to be inspired in such a way requires or will involve at least uh, to be in some sort of ecstatic state, some sort of um, altered state of mind, if you will. Um, we see that in shamanism uh, quite, quite often um, there is a lot of uh, instances where we see or, or learn about um, the, 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 the shaman um, being some being in some sort of altered state of awareness, altered state of mind, uh, to be and to get the older and to get that sort of divine inspiration to serve in that capacity. Um, we see also examples of this uh, inspiration, this this ecstatic state of being, this uh, to, this this raging uh, sort of attitude, as you were, uh, to exist in the. Uh, Berserkers and the uh, Ufidnar, uh, the, these uh, Odin's elite warriors, as, as we you know read about in some of the stories and some of the sagas, uh, they were understood or, or seen, at least documented in some instances, to be in this sort of possessed or raging or mad, you know, uh, state of being. And uh, it's a power. This this Odin that we're speaking of is a power that just overwhelms and influences and and, and, and infuses. Uh, uh, one's being to its core, and, and it ousts one's mundane consciousness. As I said before, it, it goes beyond what is just the tangible things that we can see. It's not like I look in the sky and I see, you know, clouds, and I'm like, oh, the shape of that cloud inspires me to want to go and paint a picture of clouds in the sky, or, you know, hearing, you know, uh, birds chirping, you know, making me want to go and build a birdhouse or something. They, they, these mundane sort of things, these mundane. Uh, intangible ways of being inspired. Uh, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about other. It, it, it literally takes over and, and, and infuses into one's being to, to go beyond the mundane. So you can become very frenzied and very eccentric, even very ecstatic, uh, to see and, and seem to be in a state of madness. Um, hence the, the, the origins of these other words that mean uh, the very same thing. Now, with the connection between, you know, the, the, the berserkers or the uh, Utfidnar, the, the, these, you know, battle-crazed uh, madmen, if you will, that, that, that are sometimes described in, in some of the sagas. Uh, and it's important to, to realize that the term or the word madness um, in, uh, for earlier peoples didn't mean like the loss of control. They weren't just out there, you know, throwing haymakers and, 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 and having absolute loss of their uh, senses. If anything, their senses were heightened and their awareness was heightened um, because this sense of madness, this sense of, of rage or whatever, uh, the other, right, as I mentioned before, this, this being taken over uh, and infused by something divine, by something of the sacred, um, it, you're, you're controlled by someone or something else, um, and so you have not lost your control, you have, if anything, um, been put under control. So for the ancient Germanic peoples, um, um, we, we see that they understood that this is uh, this inspiration, this ecstasy, uh, states of heightened awareness, uh, passion even, uh, that they were gifts of the divine, that they were gifts from the sacred, um, and always entailed uh, the pre that, that, that presence uh, of the pneumonious, or, or numinous, excuse me. 
Now for anybody out here who um, works in any sort of, of the arts, whether it be uh, music, whether it be uh, painting, crafting of any sort, uh, any of the any of the of the of, of the many arts that exist, um, you know, how many do you know, if if not of yourself, who at times have become um, so greatly inspired, and during those moments of greatest inspiration that you have felt, or that you know of others that have felt that uh, they themselves or you yourself um, have sort of been like taken over by something else, that something is working through you, that you are just the conduit uh, for which things can take place and, and, and when actions can take place and you are just sort of the, the conduit for which those things go to go through. Um, I felt that in some cases. I know other people who have. Um, quite often it requires a little bit of help <laughs> um, getting there into that state of mind and, and, and to enter that sort of uh, inspired state, uh, but it's happened. Uh, it's happened for me and I know uh, other people, maybe even some who are watching, that have felt that ulur, right, that have felt that sort of sacred um, touch come on you, if you will, is, is kind of the way that I look at it. Um, all inspired activities, you know, for our, for our ancient ancestors, things that became, uh, that, that made people so great, these, these inspired activities had an inherent sacredness to them. Um, you know, so when I see people nowadays in modern times uh, being able to uh, be a spiritual guide or spiritual leaders or, or, or perform any sort of great um, amazing crafts, uh, you know, yes, it takes a long time to, to, to get good at something, you know, whether it be, you know, wood carving, wood burning, you know, leather work, blacksmithing, mead making, brewery, whatever, it takes a while to hone your craft, but then there are some people who are just like so great at it. Um, I feel that that is a sense of, that they, they have tapped into the older, right? They have gotten that uh, sacred touch of that, that sacred inspiration, and that maybe even on a more regular basis stay in that sort of ecstatic state. Um, in that sort of heightened awareness state where it's almost not like even them that are doing it. They're just the conduit to it for which the, 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 that skill is being uh, displayed through. Now for, for many of folks uh, out here who are inspired and that, you know, do have ample experience of both, you know, just your mundane inspiration and that divine or that sacred uh, sort of uh, presence or intervention that, that, that takes place, uh, when you're doing these things and when you're being part of these these sort of things um, There's overlap, you know what I mean? Like you, you get the mundane you get the, 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 the sacred the things that sort of overlap each other and then that make you who you are make you do what you're able to do um, Both involves both of those things involve a sense of you know sort of being seized or being uh, taken over by something It's you know no matter how mundane it could be it could be the spark that lights the fire um, and that's the way I, I look at it now, at least in modern times, is that there is so much around us. There are so many things, you know. Um, I, when I put these videos out and when I, you know, look to um, record content on this platform, uh, I find inspiration in a lot of things. I may be learning something myself and I want to, you know, share my knowledge with everybody who I can. Um, and by no means am I like, this is it, guys. This is, you know, the one true thing that you need to, to walk away from. It's... I'm learning too, I'm a student, and I'm always going to be a student. So what I share and what I learn is my perspective, my understanding of things. If you don't agree with it, and if you don't think I'm on point, and hey, point out your uh, observations, tell me what you think, show me what you found out, let's learn together. Let's be a part of that divine, that, that sacred inspiration together, and let's find things that we can do to help better build uh, our heathen communities and our, and our, and our local tribes, kindreds, whatever they may be, um, and be an inspiration, right? Uh, for a lot of folks, you know, nowadays it's, it's hard to find anything to hold on to that's positive or be inspired positive because there's so much negativity floating around. And we find ourselves as heathens, at least I do, you know, focusing more inward. Let the, let the, let Utengard take care of itself. Let the wild, let the outer, you know, be what it is and let it, you know, destroy itself. Um, Focus inward. Focus on your hearths, your homes, your, your tribes, your kindreds. Um, focus on being an inspiration to those to whom you have an obligation. Uh, don't worry about the rest of it. Don't worry about wasting your time worrying and, and thinking about, well, what, have I do, what am I going to do tomorrow? What am I going to do when this happens or if this happens or whatever? Things are going to be fine. Things are going to work out and it'll be all right in the end. So 
this is my idea, guy. This is like this is my view of things, and I think that um, you know this whole concept of oh, there, there's going to be a lot of feedback, or at least I hope there is, uh, down in the comments section of, about this, and you know maybe where you find your inspiration, how you get inspired, what you use to get into that sort of heightened state of awareness. I know there's a lot of folks out here, myself included, that use various um, external substances to enhance their awareness. Um, so whatever you can do that's safe and um, not harmful to you or those around you, um, and you want to share that down below in the comments, feel free. Um, but let us know. Let, let everybody know because there's a bunch of people that see these videos and that, that look down in the comments. So I'm anxious to not only read your comments, but I'm also to anxious to see what other people say. So I want to thank you all again for uh, watching this video and commenting down below. Let me know what you think. Don't forget to subscribe. Check the description for all the ways that you can help support Midgard Musings. Um, and maybe something that you have will inspire a future Midgard Musings video. So thank you all again for your ongoing support. Hail, and I'll see you in the next video.